work through this forward and backward pass on this network. This network is a little bit different. We have some lags involved, and we also have some different types of relationships. So we're going to start out uh, as we normally would by putting a time period of 0 in A. We can do our normal calculation with a in A, adding the duration of 2 to that um, early start time. Notice here we have a simple finish to start relationship with B. However, there's a lag that's been introduced. Okay, So B cannot start until A finishes, but not only until A finishes, but two time periods after A finishes. Whether these are days or weeks or months or whatever. Consider this to be um, something like paint drying, concrete curing, um, shipping delays, things that don't actually take uh, work or labor on our part, but do affect our schedule. So in this way, we're just going to simply add two more time increments when we carry that number over to the early start of B. So I'm going to put 4 there. I can do my calculations here. I come up with 20. Notice that C here is much different. It actually does not have any relationship with the uh, finish times of A. Its relationship is with the start time of A. So C really could care less about when A finishes, but um, it does care about when A starts, because that's where its dependency lies. In this case, if we just had a simple start to start, and we said that C could start as soon as A starts, we'd put 0 in this location. However, we do have a lag involved here. So this is basically saying that um, four days after A starts, we can go ahead and get started on C. So we'll put that uh, 4 there. <clears throat> and then we can do our normal calculation. F also has a start-to-start -start relationship, this time with C. So in this case, F can start 9 days after C starts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 4, we're going to add 9 to it, which we should come up to something around 13. And then uh, we can do our normal calculation here, adding the duration. We should get something around 27 for the uh, early finish. Okay. Now, notice that for G, for its uh, early start, we could have 20, 14, or 27. Well, we take the longer one because that's we have to wait for all three of these to get done, right? But uh, 27 is going to, or F is going to take the longest at the time period 27. So that's our earliest start time. We're going to uh, add 9 to that, which should be um, somewhere around 36. Oops, 36. And uh, then when we uh, do our calculation for H, we're going to see that uh, H is not dependent on the finish of G, but on the start with a lag of 2. So this can start two days after G starts. So the earliest it could possibly start is in time increment 29. To our normal calculation here, we come up with uh, 34. We're going to put that 34 down here, subtract uh, 5 from it and get 29 again. So we have both uh, slack of 0 if we do the calculations on both the um, uh, start as well as on the finish. It can get a little bit weird with some of the um, different types of relationships here where you'll find out that you have slack on the um, finish of a particular um, item, but not on the start. Okay, So that can get a little bit weird. Uh, we won't get into that too much. Um, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to put 36 down here as well. 27 is going to go there. Now 27, we need to think about that a little bit though, because we could also put whatever 29 minus 2. There's actually two candidates for going in there. They Happen to both be 27, however. Okay, 27 gets carried back to here. 
Uh, okay, so we're going along here. Now, uh, 27 is going to come back down here because you notice that this finish is only related to the start of G. Okay, same thing over here. 27 is going to go up there. Okay, so now we're going to um, have uh, 27 uh, minus 16, so that should be somewhere uh, around 11. And uh, down here, we have a candidate of 17, so 27 minus 10, so that's one possibility there. But we also have 13 minus 9. Okay, what's the lower number? That would be 4. So we're going to put the lower number here. I suspect this is going to be one of those cases where we're going to see some slack on the finish time, but not on the start time. So we're going to put 4 here. Okay, that's that's where it, a lot of students get tripped up on. It's because we have to consider these two candidates because um, there's a relationship here with internally within this task to the start and what the late start is going to be. But there's also this relationship here we have to consider. Now going back um, this way, we're going to have um, uh, 11. Uh, minus 2, that's going to be 9. And uh, so we're going to take through this lag here. And then what goes in this spot, we're going to have a candidate of 9 minus 2, which is going to be 7. But we also have this relationship here. So we have 4 minus the lag of 4, which is 0. And we take the lowest number. Okay, so we're going to actually see, it looks like a couple of examples here where we're going to have um, some slack or float uh, on the finish of a task that is going to be different than the slack or float on the start of the task. And so that one there is going to be there. That one's going to be, um, let me see, 13. Okay, so uh, a lot more complex, but really not too hard to deal with if you just remember uh, to look where the arrows begin and where the arrows end.